Hey guys, my name is Toby and welcome back to another exciting Photoshop tutorial where today we are going to be talking about how to deal with banding in your images. Now, for those of you who don't know, banding is this kind of unfortunate artifact you get when you're using big areas of solid colour. So the easiest way for me to kind of show you this is to use a Photoshop gradient. So I'm just going to tick the gradient tool, which is keyboard shortcut G, click, hold, shift and drag down. I'm going to draw us a nice smooth gradient except that it's actually if we look a little bit closer here it's actually not that smooth as you can see it's kind of got lots of different bands of color which you can kind of see as these lines that go across the image and we don't really want that so this is caused because we're working in an 8-bit image and this is kind of your standard jpeg kind of image that you'd be using um, and 8 bits basically means that between pure white and pure black, there are actually only 256 different levels of brightness that we can use. Um, and this is why, if you've ever used the Levels tool, so if I hit Command or Control if you're on the PC and L, in Levels it goes from 0 to 255, so that's 256 levels if you include 0 as one of them. Um, and basically, it means that from here to here, it has to split this up equally into 256 different sections, which it can then use to give a color, which isn't actually that much if you think about it. This would be a lot smoother if we had a lot more colors to pick from. So that's kind of why this happens. Now, it's also something that can happen sometimes when you use a JPEG file. So if I hit save, I'm going to tick on preview here to see what our compression is going to do. When you compress something, Photoshop is trying to find a way to represent this image using less information. So what it does is it will kind of look at some of these colors and go, you know what, actually between here and like here, it's very, very similar. So maybe we could get away with using just, you know, one value to represent all of those colors and maybe just make them all the same color. So when you start to drag this slider down, you're going to start to see it splits things up into more and more individual bands and it's because it's trying to save space and encode using less values to make you a much much smaller file so you know this would be the 49k if we had it really little or 265k if you had it a lot bigger um, so that's something to be aware of when you shape when you go down from like 16 bit from like a raw file to an 8 bit jpeg you might end up with some of these compression artifacts so let's look at kind of a practical example of this and how you can reduce it. I'm not going to say fix it because it won't entirely get rid of it, but it will certainly help. So this is an image of a kite board that we shot in the studio the other day, and we decided that we weren't really getting on with the backgrounds uh, that we had in the studio, and we wanted to kind of have this orange spotlight glow behind it, and we kind of elected to do it in Photoshop afterwards. But this has given us this horrible kind of round artifacting where, because we've used gradients to do this, um, it, it's just very unpleasant and it's very obvious to look at and I was trying to hunt for a way to reduce this and I came across quite a good one which I thought I would share with you. So as we mentioned when you're trying to deal with compression and that sort of thing it's because Photoshop is saying everything between here and here is pretty similar so we're going to use more or less one color to do that. Everything between here and here is pretty similar so we're going to use one color for that as well. And what you want to do is make these less similar kind of all the way across. You want to get rid of this very smooth pattern. And the easiest way to do that is actually to add some noise into your image. Now, Photoshop gradients by default are completely noiseless because they're digitally generated. So adding a bit of noise is going to help sell the image a bit more anyway. And we shot this kiteboard um, at very, very low ISOs. So it doesn't really have any noise in it either. So... Another little cool tip if you're compositing something, sometimes just adding a little bit of noise to everything in your image kind of individually will help really combine everything together and make it look like one thing. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to add a new layer, which you can either do by going to Layer, New, Layer, or Command or Control, Shift and N. And I'm just going to hit OK. Now, you can't just add noise to an empty layer. You do have to have something in the layer to add noise to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paint bucket tool, which is hidden underneath the gradient tool, and I'm just going to fill it with black. Now, this looks pretty good, um, but I think we're going to do a little bit more work to it. Uh, we're going to go to filter, noise, add noise. And 
this is kind of set up from uh, earlier a little bit, but what I've done here is it's monochromatic, which is quite important. What you don't want to do is add, start adding color noise into your images because that will really start to just make it look like it's degraded a bit. You just want to kind of add this luminosity value to everything to make it a little bit more pleasant to look at. Um, you could use uniform uh, distribution, or but I quite like Gaussian. I find it looks a little bit more natural than uniform. Um, and just a fairly low amount. So we don't want this to be a hugely overpowering effect. And then what we want to do is put this onto the screen blend mode. Now the screen blend mode is basically going to get rid of anything that's black and leave just the white stuff. So we're going to get something that looks a bit like this. And you can already see, just turning this on and off, that has massively killed all of the uh, banding. Because now, because we've got this random kind of pattern, Photoshop is having to deal with this a little bit more differently in the back. Um, in the back of the program, it's kind of all the behind the scenes stuff is working to render all of this extra detail that we've put in. I say detail, it's technically noise, but there you go. Now, one thing I don't really like is I think it is a little bit strong, so we can turn the opacity down a little bit, just enough to where the banding is still kind of gone. Yeah, something like that. And then what I might do is I'm just going to drag this underneath the kiteboard because when I look at the kiteboard, I think that's actually a little bit too much for the kiteboard, and the kiteboard doesn't really need that much noise added to it. So I'm just going to drag this underneath our kiteboard layer, so it's just appearing on the background. But now this looks a bit weird that the kiteboard doesn't have any noise of its own. So I'm going to add another new layer using Command Shift N, and I'm going to add, I'm going to fill it with black again, and then I'm going to go up to Filter, Noise, Add Noise, and I'm just going to do the same thing again, but just a lot less. That's pretty good. And we're going to set that to screen. Uh, but the problem is that that is also appearing on our background, which we don't want it to do. If you look just here, it is doing both. And we actually just want it to go on the kiteboard. So the easiest way to do this is to clip this layer to our kiteboard group. And the way you do that is you press Command or Control, Alt and G. And now it's going to make it so it only appears on the actual kiteboard. And we'll turn our background one back on. And there you go. So here we have before and after. So it has added quite a lot of noise to our image, which, you know, may not work for what you're doing, but you could get away with maybe doing this a little bit more subtly. You could add, um, you could do the noise the other way. So instead of using a black layer and then screening it, you could use white and then multiply it because multiply is kind of the opposite of screen and it will give you a slightly different look with your noise which may work better for your subject but I found that this worked for what we were doing and I'm quite happy with the results so just again there's before horrible nasty ugly banding there's after nice smooth gradient that even when you save it as a JPEG will come out looking just like that so I think that is going to do it this time, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Toby, and we'll see you next time.